Hello friends, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming and welcome to my video on the Necromancer. With Blake coming up, there's a lot of changes to Necromancer that are going to be seen and I think it's going to be one of the top contenders for uh, very powerful starter builds for this league. So in this video, I'm going to first go over the Necromancer changes that are coming up and then what that means for the Necromancer going forward compared to how it played before. I'll go over how to level a necromancer and then later on we'll go over the different specters you might want to use, uh, different gem setups for zombies, specters, and summon raging spirits, as well as possibly skeletons, and of course the equipment you might want to look for. So stick around and let's get into it. Alright, let's get into the uh, gems first of all, because you'll need those for some context for the Necromancer Ascendancy. Uh, Ray's Spectre, along with all of the other minion gems I'm going to be showing, now have increased uh, maximum minion from the gem itself. This is extremely powerful. You also may notice that the Ray Spectre no longer has less minion life. Uh, which is really nice. It also is losing more damage though on top of that, but we'll talk about why that's not too significant going forward when we get to the Necromancer itself, because there are some significant portions about that. And I guess we can talk about it a little bit here, because uh, as you can see, Ray's Spectre now raises monsters based on the level of the gem, gaining plus one level per gem level above level 20. So I think the reason they got rid of the built-in more damage multiplier for the minions is because before you can only realistically achieve like level 82, 83 specters. In this, we have the potential to approach level 100 specters by uh, in using enhance and increased uh, gem levels, that kind of thing. You can probably get pretty close to a plus a level 40 raised specter. Not quite, but maybe like a level 31 one pretty easily, which would give you level 91 specters, which is substantially higher. And if uh, specters scale as they go up in level as much as they do up until level 82, uh, it's going to be a very significant buff to their damage. Now, um, the other important thing to know about specters specifically is that you'll no longer have to go into a deep level of the mines and uh, bring specters that you want to summon after summoning them in the zones they spawn in, uh, unsummon them, desecrate, find the corpses, and summon the high level version of them. Now you can literally just go to whatever story zone they spawn in initially and just summon them up so and they'll be the high level already it's very very powerful i'm very interested in that um and raise zombie same thing you can now have seven raised zombies so instead of just having a baseline that you modify only by the skill tree and through the ascendancy you're going to have a much higher baseline and of course equipment that gives plus one zombies as well uh, this may mean that you don't need to use boots of Uller and that kind of thing anymore in order to achieve a high level of zombies uh, allowing you to use more useful gear. Uh, you still have that option, of course, to just have more zombies, but the other nice thing is minions have more life. More life is multiplicative. There's a lot of ways we can get more life. This can be useful for an Aokuna's Will uh, corpse explosion type build, or it can also be useful just to have very, very, very tanky zombies that you don't have to resummon all the time. And Zombie's Slam Attack is getting cooldown recovery speed as well, which is nice because that has been removed from the Necromancer Ascendancy Tree, and we'll talk about that. Um, so you can use that with the Threshold Jewels and still have very, very strong zombies. Summon Skeletons. Uh, once again, you'll get additional Skeleton Warriors, assume, assuming uh, when you level up the gem. And now, rather than having damage effectiveness on it, you just gain 50% more added damage. Uh, it's the same thing as the damage effectiveness, though. 50% more added damage is the same as 150% uh, damage effectiveness. So, uh, you can only have 8 to start with, but of course you'll be able to cr increase that number through gear and the skill tree. And um, yeah, having things like uh, having the Abyssal Jewels that add damage is always very, very strong on summon skeletons. Now you'll be able to get more skeletons out quicker, and it'll possibly be able to compete with summon raging spirits, which is great. For the Necromancer uh, Ascendancy Tree, the only one that hasn't changed is Commander of Darkness, so I'm not really going to talk about that. Uh, but we'll talk about uh, Mistress of Sacrifice here. Uh, no longer 
it does it have your offering skills also or sorry it does have that it's unchanged your offering skills also affect you uh they've reduced the nerf to your uh the effectiveness rating of your offerings on you uh they buffed the skill effect duration uh, and then of course they've moved the increased minion duration from puppet master to this so that is pretty interesting if you want to self buff with the offerings it's very nice uh, the Plague Bringer into Corpse Pact tree right here, the 4 to 6. Uh, this has some synergy with Aokuna's will, but once again, it's pretty scary to use that because you might have your zombies just detonated on you, and after building enough life, that'll probably just one-shot you. But um, if you've consumed a corpse recently, you and your minions have 30% increased area of effect, and with at least one corpse nearby, you and allies deal 10% more damage and uh, take your enemy minions deal 10% reduced damage. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of useful even if you're not going to use Aokuna's will because while mapping you're pretty much always going to be nearby a corpse um, and you can also generate corpses yourself via uh, desecrate. So if you need it for a boss fight, just desecrate on top of your stuff yourself and your your zombies and you should be absolutely fine um your zombies will end up being a lot tankier and doing a lot more damage all right and corpse pact it may be a little bit more interesting here um 30 increased damage if you've consumed a corpse recently which was on mistress of sacrifice it was 40 percent gone down to 30 percent uh mistress of sacrifice has also moved its two percent attack and cast speed for each corpse consumed recently and uh, now we have enemies near corpses you spawned recently are chilled and shocked. I believe recently is four seconds, if I recall. So a four second chill and shock for just desecrating on enemies is insane because the shock is going to give uh, a substantial boost to your uh, minions damage. Very, very substantial. And the chill is going to give some defensive utility for both you and your corpses or for you and your minions rather. Um, corpses you spawn have 50% increased maximum life. Uh, this will be great for any kind of corpse explosion, uh, desecrate, uh, that kind of thing build. And I think that that might affect specters. If that's the case, that'll be very significant because that'll allow you to summon much tankier specters. And that is, uh, definitely something that you want. Because specters have a tendency to potentially die very quickly, and it looks like there are a lot of ways to uh, make it so they don't die so quickly here. Minions have 30% increased movement speed uh, with mindless aggression, 30% increased damage, and 10% attack and cast speed. Uh, definitely going to be what you want to pick up if you're leveling with summon skeletons or summon raging spirits. Uh, just a lot of general good stuff for your minions. Um, you lose a little bit of the tankiness. That was previously on Invoker, but that's been moved elsewhere. Some more interesting things coming up here. Um, <clears throat> bone Barrier. Grants level 20 Bone Armor skill. Um, don't know what that does yet, but if it does anything, the rest of the benefits are already very powerful. So if it does anything significant, this will be one you want to take for sure. 1% um, increased physical damage reduction per minion up to 10%. It's per minion now, so that'll count specters and even things like skeletons and uh, summon raging spirits. So very, very strong. 3% uh, increased all resist per minion up to 30%. So nice for gearing. 3% increased recovery of life and energy shield up to 30%. And your minions have 20% more maximum life. Once again, it's a more multiplier, so the minion uh, life skill um, support gem and then the um, the more life from zombies as well it will stack multiplicatively with this we can see very 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 healthy zombies that'll probably never die and if you want to use them for corpse explosions with Aokun as well um, that will end up being very powerful as well and of course uh, your unstable zombies on top of that so Lots of good stuff there. A natural strength, plus two to level of all minion skill gems. Since your minion skill gems seem to scale a lot harder from levels now, this is going to be very strong. Uh, if you're running specters, you're going to need to get this because you want as high a level specter as possible. So it'll be very essential. Uh, Essence Glutton, this one's very, very interesting because it gives a more powerful version of something that uh, I've kind of wanted for a long time. But... 
Uh, it gives 20% increased maximum mana for each nearby corpse. You and your allies regenerate 0.2% of energy shield per second up to 2% per second. Um, energy shield regen, of course, is very powerful if you're stacking a lot of energy sh uh, shield. And then for each nearby corpse, you and your allies regenerate 5 mana per second up to 50 per second. This is an actually insane amount of flat regen. Uh, because it's flat regen, it's going to scale with... Uh, mind over matter and with your percentage mana regen um to give you some context this is several <laughs> several clarities uh max level clarities like just to to show you right now if you take a clarity at level 20 that is going to be uh 17.2 regen per second so this is like three clarities three max level clarities if you're using alakuna's will and uh, just generally speaking you can just desecrate or constantly be near corpses just by the nature of clearing so uh yeah mind over matter with this is going to be extremely strong because we're going to see regen levels that we haven't achieved in a very long time since they nerfed flat mana regen uh, you'll also regenerate 8% of energy shield over 2 seconds when you consume a corpse, and then 8% of mana per second, uh, or over 2 seconds when you consume a corpse. So, very powerful, keep you topped off. Might see some hybrid builds with Mind Over Matter. Uh, also very good for just flat ES builds. So, very, very powerful, very interesting, and yeah, I like this one a lot. So, that's pretty much all of the major changes of Necromancer. Let's start talking about leveling. Alright, so for leveling, you'll want to start leveling off with uh, Summon Raging Spirits, and you'll be looking for a 3-link wand from Nessa in Act 1, preferably either blue-blue-blue or blue-blue-red, and with that, you can simply uh, make it a plus one wand, by a plus one to fire gems wand, by putting a transmute on it. And then you can get an iron ring from the vendor along with any red gem. So we'll grab a holy flame totem for only one scroll here. And then you can sell the holy flame totem and an iron ring to get a ruby ring. And you can take your magic wand here uh, with any mod on it. Uh, sell that with the ruby ring and the alteration. And boom, plus one to socketed fire gems. Now, the plus one to socketed fire gems wand, you'll want to go with summon raging spirits minion damage and melee splash would be the preferred uh if you're unable if you can only get blue 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 then you can throw uh minion speed on later on i don't believe you get that early on but you can even use just like the uh, arcane surge to keep your mana up if you want type thing or uh yeah but melee splash is definitely the way you want to go if possible and combustion is fine too combustion works okay but uh melee splash means you can uh, use the play style of basically dropping a single Raging Spirit into the uh, pack as you run through it. I'll sh kind of give you an example. But for leveling, you'll find pack, you'll drop a Summon Raging Spirit, you'll Flame Dash through the pack. I <laughs> took my Flame Dash off apparently. But yeah, it's pretty simple. You'll be able to get experience. Uh, I have a recent leveling practice series of live streams that you can look at for those. Um, once you get your fourth link, you'll want to get Spell Echo in there as soon as possible and then Unleash. Actually, you get those at the same time. So you're just going to want Unleash. Uh, you'll want to set up your Unleash and that will make it so that you can summon or summon Raging Spirits at a time. There's a little bit of a recharge, but you'll be basically just running through packs and unleashing your Raging Spirits on them. So as a four link, you'll have SRS, uh, Minion Damage, Unleash. And melee splash uh, you'll also want to start using your zombies i assume with the more the more life that zombies are going to be more viable earlier on so for your zombies you're probably just going to want to put some uh put some uh raise zombie minion life is very nice fortify those would be the first three for a fourth link you can use multi-strike you can use minion damage uh, you can use minion speed any of those are fine and uh, zombies you're probably going to hold on to for a lot longer. If you run two six links, so uh, like so, uh, eventually you're going to want to switch to specters. And if you're running uh, multiple six links, then for your zombies, uh, there's a lot of different skill gem setups you can do. But later on, you no longer really need the minion life. 
especially now that you're going to get a more uh, minion life modifier, but I do like to use it anyway. So uh, I have zombies, zombie, or minion speed, minion damage, fortify, uh, minion life. There are a lot of different ways you can set up. Uh, Multi-strike is very good. If you want to go pure damage, if you can get more red sockets, you can go melee physical, fortify, and multi-strike. Um, you can even use uh, maim as well to get more damage multiplier and make it so that your uh, zombies can maim enemies. That's a very strong as well. So uh, there's a lot of different ways you can build up your zombies. They're quite strong, especially if you get the threshold jewels on them, and they're going to be stronger as a base going forward. Uh, if you can get two six links, you also want a specter. My specter is of choice, personally. I currently like using the uh, Solaris guards or slave drivers. I think they're currently the best. They're going to be built up very differently. I think slave drivers are better for bossing, but I like the Solaris guards in particular uh, for map clear. And what I have for the Solaris guards currently is Ray Spectre, GMP, Minion Damage, Controlled Destruction, Faster Casting, and Spell Echo. Uh, you can replace Faster Casting, but I had a 20% one here. And uh, Spectres currently have a minus 65% cast rate, I believe it is. Uh, yes. So you want to make sure that you're um, getting the higher cast rate. And I'll just kind of give an example or show you how these work out. But... Uh, these particular minions are very, very strong. The slave drivers are excellent for single target, and for those, you'll want to use um, you'll you won't use GMP. You'll still use minion damage and controlled destruction and spell echo. You can use faster casting if you want, and lightning pen is very good because you'll want to use them for boss clearing. But yeah, these guys have a very strong beam attack, and then they have a nice. Uh, the reason we use GMP is because they shoot very rapidly. This this fire uh, attack out here like this. Uh, it's not exactly a fireball, but it's fairly strong, clears fairly quickly, has a lot of coverage, and is particularly good. And uh, yeah, you'll want to get as high level Spectre as possible. Uh, as far as gearing, uh, Skullhead is a really nice piece of beginner gear. Once you get it early on, it'll make your zombies substantially stronger. It also happens to have all resist life and mana, which is really nice. Um, if you can get either a Chevron's Wrapping or a Viz Mortis, you can go for Midnight Bargain. This will limit you to one six link, but it's going to be still uh, fairly strong as it'll give you an additional Spectre, um, additional Zombie, and the big downside, uh, a bunch of minion stats as well. The big downside is it reserves 30% of your life, which is why you can use Chevron's Wrapping. You can also just go hy Hybrid with Viz Mortis. Um, and I guess stack some chaos resistance to make sure you don't just get wrecked with chaos and you'll probably have to actually build your life up. But you can go full energy shield with Chevron's wrapping instead and that way you'll be able to use a bow. A bow like this is very good. Uh, the plus one to socketed gems is nice and later on you'll multi-mod this and also add on the uh, plus two to level of support gems and you'll try to get a level four in power. To go on to this and that'll give you uh, basically a level 7 in power and an additional level to your specters in this case you would put your specters into the bow um, also gives you a nice opportunity to just use a uh, quiver that has high stats like this one has life and resistances it's a lot easier to get a quiver that just has a lot of stats on them uh, very high life is super attainable like getting a tier 1 life uh, roll on a quiver and then a few resistances it's fairly trivial. Um, most of the time people look for damage stats like the other ones I have on here, but uh, completely unnecessary, obviously, since you're going purely for minions. And uh, if you are going to go for the Chevron's Wrapping Midnight Bargain, you'll want to use a, uh, a unique shield that I'll show you here. And you can also use the, uh, the notable node Necromantic Agus. Now, we are going to be using the particular shield here that I'm going to show you uh, because I can't remember its name offhand, <laughs> even though I should be able to. Uh, Victario's Charity. Uh, with Necromantic Agus, to give all of our minions chances to grant nearby allies power charges and frenzy charges on kill, this greatly, greatly enhances the damage of your minions and is one option if you are going to go a Midnight Bargain build. 
So very strong there. Plus it gives you some AoE for your aura skills as well. And uh, yeah, the, just the, the stats are very nice to have on your minions as well. The all resist, uh, chaos resist, life, all of that kind of scales up with your minion life as well. So Victario's Charity, Mignite Bargain, and uh, Chevron's Wrapping is very nice. It requires you to have some pretty good gear, a uh, high energy shield helmet. Um, probably going to go for a crystal belt at that point. Uh, much higher energy shield than this gloves. And you'll be going pretty much pure energy shield that way since you're reserving 30% of your life. You can also potentially use a, a smaller aura with blood magic at that point. Uh, if you have the sockets in order to reserve even more of your life since you're reserving so much of it anyway and as far as the skill tree goes um, it's just going to be we don't know what the new skill tree is going to be but it's just going to be getting all the minion stuff and either all the life stuff um and or all the energy shield stuff so it, it's going to be pretty simple um if you're not going life you wouldn't get nodes like these you would instead uh just not path here at all and just go around through the minion nodes here and you would path up through deep thoughts instead and get like unnatural calm and that kind of thing to make sure you're getting arcane focus uh probably ground foresight and that kind of wheel instead of the wheel down here <clears throat> gems are also really nice uh being able to give get gems that have life and other stats uh ghastly eye jewels are going to be the preferred especially for skeletons um and for skeletons you're going to want a very similar setup to summon raging spirits probably get melee splash on there uh multi-strike fortify maybe or uh just melee damage and a bunch of flat damage you could probably do some sort of elemental skeleton build as well if you can get enough uh flat damage that way but you get uh life and whatever bonuses you can get this is pretty much an ideal version of the of a jewel that you can get but you would want a higher life total if possible because it has life all resistance for minions, physical damage to minions, and then attack and cast speed if your minions have killed recently. Something like this with higher life is ideal for the end game. Um, you want as many of these as you can fit into your build. I currently have four. Um, chance to blind on hit, or chance to maim on hit, or chance to taunt on hit are also all very powerful uh, that you can get on your on your abyssal jewels so very nice also dexterity is a great stat for abyssal jewels since you need it i currently use haste i think haste is pretty much the best all around um if you're because i'm using spellcasters that don't really benefit from hatred or wrath could use anger as well which would benefit my uh my specters and my zombies but my zombies don't really scale uh they scale more of the, the melee damage so I, I'd say that haste is overall the best skill that you can get. That's pretty much it. That's everything I wanted to go over. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll do an update with a more specific build when the league rolls around. This has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and I will see you next time. Bye.